All right, welcome everyone to Con 251 Materials Testing and Processing uh, course intro is really what this is about. So just an overview of the course and what we should be looking at for this this um, hybrid session this semester. Um, my name is Todd Fonts. I will be the instructor uh, for this class this semester. And uh, yeah, welcome. Welcome one and all. Um, a little bit about me before we talk about the class. Uh, so my background is in civil engineering. I got a bachelor's from University of Colorado at Boulder. And uh, I, I had an emphasis in structural engineering and worked as a structural engineer in the construction industry. These would be the types of projects that I would work on. Uh, what we have is like a wall forming type of system. Uh, so this would be like a handset forming, smaller residential jobs. A lot of times you'd use this handset stuff. Uh, if you had larger jobs, it'd be bigger panels and things like that. So I would come up with layouts, figure out uh, how many ties I need, uh, any kind of bracing, uh, things like that. Um, also in the center, I would design these things. It's like an access scaffolding. So I worked on high rises around the mainly, primarily the Denver area. And we went outside of there. Uh, and, and what it is, is just if you need to do any fascia work or uh, painting or whatever else on the exterior of the building, you have this scaffolding. And as soon as you start getting to very high heights, they have to be designed because you have leg load issues or you know, whatever else you might have, how often you have to button tie it to the building. Uh, in here, there's a stair tower and you have these diagonal braces. And uh, so I would design all that kind of stuff. Make work for the building. Uh, last one be another thing. So if this is forming on the sides of the concrete, shoring is like, uh, you know, the vertical piece of, of, of holding concrete in place while it cures. So this is a flying table shoring system. I would design this type of shoring. I would do the more basic, what you normally see is just like a just a frame with uh, beams and stringers and plywood above it. And, and then normally what it is, you have these screw jacks, you screw it up, you pour the concrete, unscrew the jack, strip it, put it up a level and continue until you're, you're done with construction. So um, I would design systems like that. Flying tables just means you're using a crane to fly from level to level, a little more complicated, but not too bad. These you have trusses and things. So, so that's really what I was involved with um, throughout my time in industry. And after about five years of doing this, I decided I wanted uh, to, to teach a little. So I actually went back to school and got a master's in uh, physics education uh, from the University of Colorado, Denver, and I became a science teacher. Uh, I taught physics and chemistry and astronomy and all sorts of things. I probably didn't have any reason or right to be teaching, but since there wasn't really engineering in K-12, um, I was kind of stuck doing physics because that was the closest thing. But then I developed my own engineering classes uh, when I was teaching. This is the early 2000s, so back then there wasn't much out there. There's like Project Lead the Way, if you're familiar with that, or maybe summer camps or things like that. But So I developed my own curriculum, and I was real excited about it, and I wanted to do that more uh, more on a full-time basis. So I went to, to here, to Colorado State University, and got a Ph.D. in engineering education. So the idea behind it was um, looking at these experiences that, that – that uh, you get in your K-12 years that influence your decision to pursue construction or engineering. You know, what drew you to this? Was it uh, swinging a hammer uh, as a summer job or was it actually something the school did to promote it, which is really unlikely? Um, or was it uh, a relative or, you know, why did you choose to go into the field that you're going into? So that's, that's really what my research had to do with and, oh, and also how to prepare you to, to be ready for something like that, right? Um, after I finished my PhD uh, at CSU, uh, I worked at Old Dominion University in Norfolk, Virginia, where I was a uh, uh, I taught in the uh, industrial technology program and tech ed program. So really, it was more industrial. It wasn't really my forte. I didn't really, you know, it was okay, I suppose, but um, but I really wanted to do something closer to construction, civil engineering, things like that. So. After uh, three years at Old Dominion, then I took a job at Ohio University in Athens, Ohio, and that's where I've been for the last five years teaching uh, civil mechanical engineering courses, uh, basically the fundamental materials type of classes, uh, statics, dynamics, strength of materials, things like that. And then this is my first semester at CSU, so I'm happy to be back in Colorado, happy to be back at CSU, even though it seems like I have to not physically be on campus as much as I'd want. Uh, but we'll get there. 
So that's about me. You know, I would love to hear more about you and maybe I'll get to know many more of you throughout this semester or my time here at CSU. So for the time being, let's move on and talk about this class in particular. Uh, so uh, let's talk about the syllabus. Uh, first thing on the syllabus is, is my information. Uh, there's me. I uh, pronounce my last name Fonts. You know, some people screw it up. I won't get upset if you do. Everyone, fans or whatever, you want to call me, it's fine. I'll get it. Oh, 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 I'm all over the place. Uh, my office is 107A Guggenheim. I've actually only seen it uh, once. So I haven't moved in yet because of this whole COVID thing. So hopefully I will be moving in there shortly. Um, and hopefully you can find it. It's kind of tucked in behind a classroom. But my office hours, what I'm planning on right now is 11 to 1230 on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, uh, or by appointment. Of course, you know, that's, I'm hoping to be in my office those times unless they're telling us because there's, we're not supposed to be in our office more than required. So uh, it might be better to shoot me an email and say, hey, I have a question about this or that. And, and, and then we can do a Zoom or a, a um, Teams or something like that. And maybe just communicate via email. And that might be the best way. There's my email address right there. Just, you know, same as everyone else at Colorado State. I don't even have a phone yet in my office. So I don't have a phone number. Even if I get a phone number, it's probably the worst way to contact me because who uses a landline nowadays, right? But uh, so, yeah, email's best. There are my tentative office hours. You can contact me whenever, though. Um, I'm always available. As far as the textbook, this is our textbook for this course, Fundamentals uh, of Materials for Science and Technology. Is, I have this. There's my physical copy right here, uh, soft copy, so it isn't as expensive or soft back, whatever you call it. So, uh, yeah, that's what the class is based on. Um, so that's that. You see ISBN, you can get it used, or Amazon, or something like that. Uh, as far as grading for the course, it's really, it is supposed to be a lab-based class. So what I have is 50% of it will be based on the lab experiences, and 50% of it will be based on what we cover in the class with quizzes, exams, and the final exam. Uh, and you can see the breakdown there. Uh, I can tell you right now, lab projects, once again, we'll see how this works. I'll talk more about that uh, in just a bit. But, um, you know, right now we're under the assumption that we're still going to be face to face. And but I can't have everyone in the lab at once. And there's some issues there. But if we do have to go virtual, it's still going to be 50 percent of the class, 50 percent of your grade. So it'll be, you know, recorded or some other method like that. Uh, and then I'll also be covering content, which which is uh 100% virtual. So I'll just record. I'll do some PowerPoints. I really don't like PowerPoints, but I'll, I'll probably do some PowerPoints because it's, it's, you know, what you have to do, I guess. Um, I might do some OneNote where I'm actually just writing like a chalkboard style almost, and, and that'll get uploaded. But, but everything will be uploaded onto Canvas, and you can just watch videos. Uh, my notes will be on there. I'm going to try, try and provide you everything that I have so to make all the content part of it uh, pretty manageable. So the, uh, uh, let's see, so the, once we start going over material, what the quizzes are, they're a weekly quiz. So I figure they're not going to be difficult. It's like four or five questions and basically watch a video and they're, they're, they're open notes. So you can just go back and look in the video if you're stuck or look at the notes and see, you know, answer the questions. It's just a, it's just a help motivate you so you don't procrastinate too much before the, an, an exam and say, okay, oh, I got to watch, you know, eight hours of video now or something like that. So just keep you on track, keep you focused. Um, that's why I have the weekly quiz. It's only 10% of your grade. It's not a bunch. Shouldn't be overly challenging. The exams, there's three exams and a final exam. Each one is worth 10%. So that's not like the final. The final is cumulative, but it's not like each exam. It's not like a big master. You know, it's all dependent on the final. So each one is equally weighted. Um, and I do have a schedule. Uh, I'll, I guess I could try and pull that up now. This could be a nightmare, but let's see what happens if I were to go right to the syllabus. Um, so this is actually the word document of the syllabus and I'll have this uploaded to canvas as well. And you can see the exact same stuff I'm going over right now, like my contact information, course objectives with probably no one ever reads uh, the textbook. Uh, PPE, we probably aren't going to have any field trips, but you know, uh, this is like a standard statement on all of these. It seems like standard grading. Um, I just went over for the exams and whatnot. I guess we'll talk about it a bit, but what I wanted to discuss before I get there is um, is the outline of this course. So uh, as you can see by week, date, topic, 
lab. I know what I was going to say. And then the weekly quizzes. So there's no quiz the first week. There's also no lab the first week. So hopefully we can get adjusted to this, this environment. And really the second week is when we'll have our first lab, we'll have our first quiz. And then you can see there's quiz pretty much every other or every week. I do skip it like before an exam. I'll have, uh, you know, I'll give you more time to review or whatever else. So there won't be a quiz every week. But, uh, but so now you could go ahead and look forward and say, all right, on 9 28, there's going to be an exam. 11 2, there'll be an exam. 12 7. These exams will have to be uh, something that'll be, you know, done wherever you are. And um, we'll talk more about those before, before they come up. But that's, of course, not on campus. Uh, so that's, that's the, the general outline that I'm planning on. We'll see how it works. Let's see if I can get back to the PowerPoint, see if this is going to work. Yeah, all right. Uh, it's the standard grading criteria uh, for all these classes. No minus or plus systems in this uh, department is what I've been told. So just the, the uh, A, B, C, D, F. And so let's talk a little bit about these labs because it's, it's, it's definitely a challenge to try and do a lab-based class uh, and still do everything we need to do with social distancing and mask wearing and everything else. And to make it even more difficult, uh, the lab is being renovated right now. And we're told that for the first four weeks, we should not expect to be able to get into the lab. So <laughs> that insult and injury, I, I'm told that I can't use the lab for the first four weeks. And then when I can use the lab, I need to decrease class. I can't have the full class in there. So I spent some time thinking about how to do that. And this is what I came up with. Hopefully this, this process will work and it makes sense. But um, my thought is that we will form groups of three or four, a maximum of four in a group. And does it not say that? It doesn't, there are four or five, it doesn't say, but there's a maximum of four per group. Um, we'll go over this in just a second here on Canvas. You, you can go to Canvas uh, and, and pick a group of your choice. I, I did this, first I started assigning everyone to groups, but I figured since since 151 is a prereq for this class, many of you should uh, have already, maybe you've met each other, maybe you know each other, maybe you don't, it's not a big deal either way, I'm new here. But um, if there's someone you want to work with, I figured I'd give you the opportunity that you could sign up in the same group as that person and that way you can work on the labs together uh, or multiple people, up to four people in a group. And the idea is that um, you're going to pick a group. Now, you do have to stay within your registered section, meaning if you registered for a uh, Wednesday lab class, you, I don't remember the times off the top of my head, you still have to go to the Wednesday groups. And, there, and then within Wednesday groups, there'll be like six different groups, like Wednesday group one, Wednesday group two. I guess I'll do this in a second. Pick one of those. You have to stay within your, your day, though. Uh, and you and I'm going to give everyone if you don't have a preference at all, you're like, I don't care who I'm working with or whatever. Just don't sign up for a lab. Or you can just go in there and just pick based on random names. But if you don't know, uh, you don't need to sign up for lab. And I'll just throw I'll make the, the numbers work out better and put people in different groups uh, after Wednesday of the first week of classes. So you'll see a deadline. There's actually an assignment on Canvas that will remind you to, to sign up by this date. And if you don't do it by that Wednesday, then I'll just put you in a group. Um, once you're in a group, it's this, it's a cool little environment within Canvas where you can share files and documents and everything else. The idea is it's supposed to be as much of a collaborative environment where you can work together as possible, even if you aren't physically together. Um, because, like I said, there's a limit to how many people I can have in the in the classroom. So I can. What my thought is, I well, based on my space requirements, I can only have two from each group physically uh, attend the lab. So if there's three of you in a group, then two are going to go and one's going to not go. And then those two who go are going to need to give the member who didn't go enough information so that they can complete their own lab write-up because each person has to has to do their own lab write-up. Um, I would think it would make the most sense to, to say, hey, I'll go to lab one, you go to lab two, I go to lab three, you know, whatever whatever works best. But if you're someone who doesn't want to go to any labs because you just, you don't want to deal with the headaches and mask wearing or whatever, that's fine if you can get at least one person from your group to agree to go to the labs. So um, you'll be re re relying on them. This is a group effort, right? So you'll be relying on your group members to get you the information and then, or you need to be responsible for getting the information to your group. And however you divvy that up amongst your group members, 
it's fine by me, but um, the most I can have is two members per group come to the lab. And I do need a lab report by everyone in the group. And there I say you could take pictures, videos, notes, or whatever you might uh, do to help those students uh, complete their lab reports. And I already said that whole thing about Canvas. So let me, let me, so I did this ahead of time, see if I can do this without everything crashing. Um, so this is a student view of our class. This is a homepage that I have right now. Uh, notice I do have sections one and two combined. Uh, and then what I'm saying is to do this group thing, you want to go to people. And over here, there's groups. And this is everyone in the class. You can go to groups. And within groups, you'll see that, well, this is the, the first lab section is Wednesday 1 to 2.40. And then right after that, there's a little one. And what that means is this is the first lab group. And I believe, see, I have a little lock thing here. And I think that's because I'm not actually a student. So it won't allow me to sign up for a group. I, but I believe what yours will say right here is it'll say like join group. Um, and you could pick which group you want. Now notice there's this, there's this little one behind it. This has a little two. So there's three, four, five, six. Those are all the Wednesday sections. If you sign up for Wednesday lab, you could pick any of those six sections. If you're signed up for the Thursday morning lab, you could do any of those. Thursday at the one o'clock, you could do any of those. And then lastly, the Friday. Friday had less students in it, I guess, because people don't want to go to lab on Friday afternoon. Uh, so the Friday, there are only five sections. And like I said, and once you're in a lab group, even though you, you, you can actually get out and change lab groups, but I'm going to close that after we're probably right around the first lab just because I don't want um, – I, once you start doing assignments, you can't jump back and forth. Things get really messy and be messy anyways, right? Uh, so once you – once you go, try and not leave groups too much. But uh, definitely make up your decision by uh, hopefully Wednesday of the first week of, of classes. So that's, that's what that looks like. Um, I don't know what else I can really show you. I don't have this all built out yet, uh, so I'm not going to – Go around here too much, but when you get in here, you know it's it's going to be based on modules, as you see. Well, I guess I don't have them all open, but it'll say like week one. It'll have the dates for week one. I'm trying to make this as easy as possible. Some people really build these out and make them massive, and I'm trying to only stick to the basics because I think you can get overwhelmed with too much crap in your canvas. So, uh, so yeah, so that's lab groups. Let's get back into here. Uh, I get all that. I think I got all that. Uh, oh, also, as far as labs, like I said, there's there's no lab the first week. We can get adjusted. We can talk about this. We can answer questions. We can get our lab groups assigned, all that kind of stuff. For the second week, because there is, uh, because for the first, and if you've registered recently or looked at the schedule, you'll actually see that it has it laid out. It says, oh, from August 20th to September 20th, going to be in this classroom and it's a different classroom based on which section you are it's either going to be guggenheim 107 118 or precon 101 so uh the reason behind that is like i said the lab renovations will start off there for the first four weeks and then we'll move over to the regular uh lab so the first week there is no lab the second week you will get this classroom and then we'll take it from there and I'm not exactly sure because it's hard to do a lab in a classroom. I don't know what I'm going to do. But the first classroom lab is just, it's like a measurement lab with calipers and things. It's not its not too crazy. So I think that that we can do in a classroom fairly easily. Also, when, you, when we come to the lab, either classroom or the actual lab, you do have to wear a mask no matter what. They're really, uh, they're really cracking down on that. So um, please make sure you're aware of that. And also, if, you know, I don't, I don't think I need to say it, but if you do feel any kind of symptoms, uh, you know, stay home. We're hoping to stay, you know, face to face as long as possible. Um, I have a feeling that at some point, I think many people feel that it's it, this thing's going to get shut down if there ends up being a big enough outbreak. So we're trying to prevent that. I don't know. I'm sure you get all that. So um, this is a course schedule for the first six weeks. That's up until exam one. It's almost like the first block, right? And you can see this, this is, once again, on that physical syllabus, which you should be able to find on Canvas. This is just a snapshot of it. I'm giving you is the topic. So each week, we'll just cover one topic. And then the lab we're doing that week. And then the chapters uh, that go along with the material we're covering. And then the quizzes 
uh, and when those would be like, once again, no quiz, no lab first week. After that, almost weekly quizzes. So three quizzes before the first one. What else do I got? Anything here? Let's see here. Uh, how do I go to advance this thing? Oh, that's all I have. So with that in mind, welcome once again, Con 251, and let's have a good semester. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are too, even though it's a limited capacity. Um, shoot me an email if you have any questions or comments. Otherwise, get started on modules, and you can start watching the first videos if they are up. Thanks, and have a good one.